Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to a new episode of Entropia Content. Sorry, I'm recording very early in the morning again, so my voice might be a little bit deeper than usual. I did get some good news right off the bat, Entropia-wise. I noticed it yesterday while I was collecting sweat, but I figured I'd save it, give the person a shout-out on the show. Yeah, it was nice. Uh, a guy named Alexandru Vlad purchased a blueprint at my shop, the FOMA shop. Looks like he wanted to craft some Lesser Elijah, so he picked up a copy of the print there. Saved himself having to go somewhere else to get it. Uh, let's see, what was I been doing lately? Oh yeah, I was collecting sweat, so I'll have to get back to next island. Now today I'm planning on finishing the crafting run. And I'll swing by the daily mission person, but I think that I'll just be doing the sand runner fuel cells. Can't remember what time I played the game at yesterday. I'm pretty sure today's earlier. I'm trying to get back into the day shift routine, so went to bed at like 11 last night. Man, did I ever dream better going to bed at the proper time? So I was thinking, dear God, that's why my dreams haven't been going so good. When you go to sleep at like 4 in the morning and just pass out for a couple hours, it's not really enough time to dream properly. Hey, so what are we looking for? Ugh. Ancient Greece? No, that's wrong. I can hardly wait till they resolve this Orpheus cave teleporter thing. It's so annoying having to go to the same cave over and over and over again just in order to teleport. They should do it like the other planets where any teleporter can just take you to Ancient Greece. It's funny because I'm always advocating for the never die teleport tokens which would make teleporting even slower <laughs> or more difficult. Now it's funny because I was reading the Entropia news on the, the Facebook page this morning. There was a player complaining, he's like, hey, everyone's bragging that the game is more full than ever. And he said that everywhere he goes in the world, it's like a ghost town, except for like just one place. And then I was saying to him, like, yeah, never did I notice this problem too, our president. He came up with the solution, the teleport tokens, but everyone in Entropia fought him over it and said they didn't want the teleport token system. So, now we don't have people exploring the game. They just teleport to one place and that's it. So that's why the teleport tokens, I think, would like help disperse players all over the world. But I could be wrong about that, but... I don't know, I still think it's worth a shot, because do we want the game to be the same forever, or do we want to tr keep trying to adapt? No, that's wrong. I was bragging yesterday that I remembered which it was and forgot today. It's interesting. It says that uh, mine for the blood of the gods. I've got two of them, but still no green check mark here. So maybe one more to go. Now I gotta hurry up and finish this because man, I want to make it to my shop at uh, what you call it, Camp Crunk, so that I can set up my Halloween decorations if I even have any. Okay, where is the daily mission? How come I can't find it? Ah, uh, stupid fucking concussion systems! I could be looking right at it, and not see it. It's fucking annoying as hell. There it is. Okay, what is going on? How come I can't talk to her? There we go. Fox sakes. Wrong again. What do you know? 
Oh, this is so fucking annoying. I wish they could just tell us what the mission was instead of having to go in each one and fucking abandon it over and over again because I picked the wrong one. And it's like the person who designed this didn't even try it. Now, I shouldn't complain so much, but... There we go. I'm going to have to go visit May, see if I can get the other Lesser Elijah one from her. If I can, then I'll give the Lesser Elijah a quick craft too. I'm hooked on that Lesser Elijah thing. Oh yeah, and that was one of the other viewers was saying too that he keeps disliking the show because he wants to see timestamps. I, I totally agree with that. I want to see timestamps too. It's just practically, I have like a full-time job and I'm recording four hours of content today. So if I tried to rewatch everything I recorded and in its entirety and create timestamps. Uh, especially with my memory issues, I can't even remember what I recorded. So it's like I literally have to watch the whole show from beginning to end in order to create timestamps. And it's just not feas feasible. So if anyone actually is a viewer and wants to help with that, could help get my show less dislikes by him. <laughs> but yeah, it's what can you do? Can't please everybody. Right, so now I gotta try to remember because they won't tell you which was the good teleporter. I think it's Tanzanite. That sounds kind of familiar. It's good if they don't tell me. At least it's helping exercise my memory. Maybe one day I'll improve it. Not likely. Ah, it was this one. Sweet. Yeah, it looks like May is available. So I must have woke up and did that daily mission quite early. Or, yeah, it's 9 o'clock now, huh. Alright, action. Time for some action. We're a real survivor. <laughs> nice tool. <laughs> I shouldn't be saying that to other guys. <laughs> Gay. <laughs> no, there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Real survivor. Hopefully I have enough to complete this. I have to get 50 successes and only 200 and some clicks to go. Oh, and they're kifing me right off the bat. You son of a... <laughs> Come on, let's get more than a ped for a change. Oh, it's just trash again. Oh my god, still all fails. What a nightmare! <laughs> now, boy, did I ever have some action packed dreams last night going to bed at a normal time? It was like an adventure fucking novel from beginning to end. Every time I fell asleep and woke up in the middle of the night, went back to sleep, the dream just continued off where it left. So I was very happy with that. It's like it was such an entertaining story, I really didn't want to see it end. Or not end before I seen the ending. Yeah, so the dream was is that I was going up north on a big adventure again, and first stop was at my haunted house. Well, there's over a ped. That was pretty good. Still no actual success. <laughs> Now, so part of the dream was me, like, trying to stay in the haunted house with my friends, and it, it kept failing because the fucking floor kept collapsing in the dream. Which is kind of funny, because that's the problem of why my house is condemned right now, is there was a foundation problem with one of the walls. I'm pretty much worried the whole thing is going to collapse. What happened was, is I'm, my house is on, like, the bottom of a hill, 
and it's a big hill and I'm assuming every time it rains it fucking floods the foundation because the water will rush down the hill and get some of the house's foundation the person who built that house really should have like reinforced the foundation so that water couldn't seep through it it's this typical was it cinder block foundation where they just put like cinder blocks in a circle all right so absolute crap thanks next island <laughs> Maybe they can give me some blueprints now. That'd be sweet. And I've been noticing lately that I do a lot of full condition clicks. And it really doesn't help me at all. It's like even if when I hit the full condition, it's barely anything more than what it would have been at the queue. So, it's a little bit of disappointment. But, oh well. Can't win them all. I figured the game is probably trying to get even with me for withdrawing or $10,000 US. And barely depositing. <clears throat> I guess we're drawing 10,000 over how much I deposited. I wonder if that helps. What's his name? Serial Overdrive. Since he never withdraws, did the, does the game give him bigger loot? I was thinking that'd be a, well, a good way to design the game, right? If you could design it so that people get bigger loots when they don't withdraw so that way you keep all the money in the game I know it'd be a little bit sketch honesty wise but hey if you're building a company and you want it to succeed sometimes you gotta bend the rules a little bit especially when it's not a casino so they don't have to follow any of this casino rules and actually giving honest payouts The Voodoo Boots. I don't know if I have a pair of these yet, so I'll check them, or click this, or check them out. Alright, we'll check them out after at the end of the crafting run. A little bit of excitement to save what the boots look like. I've probably already seen them, but forgot. <laughs> but for any new viewers, it'll be good for you. <laughs> Now, I appreciate everyone who's still watching the show. I know a lot of times I don't really talk too much in Tropia content. I gotta try to focus on that more. It's always about my life. It's always about me. <laughs> now, I always try to talk about my friends and other people when I'm hanging out with them, but lately with the lockdown, I'm pretty much spending 99% of my time alone for like, I guess, three years in a row now. So I don't really have much information or anything to talk about other people <laughs> unless I watch TV which I don't so I don't even really see what's going on with that the closest thing I watch to TV is sports and usually I just watch it while I'm playing in Tropia and I just glance at the scores so I'm not even really watching I'm just glancing at it I used to watch movies and TV shows, but usually I can only watch it when I have someone else to watch it with so I can discuss what's happening with them. If I'm just watching it myself, I usually find it so boring I just fall asleep. It's like a lot of things in life, it's just not as fun by yourself, right? <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> now just wait till the sex machine arrives. <laughs> Now, for some reason, I haven't seen many guys bragging in the comments that they all ordered the sex machine. <laughs> it's like the good old quality. Woman buys the dildo. It's like the most popular thing on the internet. Guy buys the sex machine. He's a fucking creep. <laughs> it's like a deadbeat dad. You ever heard about a deadbeat woman? No, nope. because if a woman's a deadbeat, it's the man's fault. <laughs> like a deadbeat mom well that means that she had a really shitty husband right <laughs> not to be too mean like that it's a whole victimhood thing <laughs> gets the best out of me even though I try to fight it <laughs> Oh well, no pains, no gains. Yeah, so anyways, my uh, dream up north progressed, where eventually 
going out from the, my haunted house, I started looking for ley lines, and I found this one ley line spot that was in ice. And for some reason, the ice had formed to match the ley lines. I had my compass out, and I was like, oh yeah, this one matches the prime meridian, and this one goes on this angle. I was like, all right, I got the evidence for the ley lines I was looking for. And then I tried to show some of my friends in the dream. They came over, and they're like, where's this ley line evidence? And then I looked on the ground, the fucking ice had all melted, and it was gone. It's like, ah, oh, the evidence, it's gone. <laughs> so I was thinking maybe that means that my Piri Reese book is going to arrive today. Because that's what I was thinking I was talking about yesterday. How Perry Reese, when he did his uh, ley line maps, it was funny, I've been realizing that the ley line maps showed the Ice Age. and gives you a lot of clues to the Ice Age. And I was like, wait a minute, Perry Reese was the ancient expert on drawing the ley lines. And what did he draw on his maps? He drew the North Pole without any ice and drew the entire landmass. And then science to this day is still trying to figure out how they saw through the ice. I was like, maybe he didn't have to see through the ice if they had the knowledge from what it was like during the Ice Age. Because my Ice Age map or the Gravity Well map shows that the entire North Pole becomes free of ice during the Ice Age. It becomes warmer. And the real North Pole shifts between England and Canada's East Coast. And that becomes the new North Pole, and that's where all the ice is. I'm explaining why the Ice Age is only crushing the East Coast of Canada and hammering Europe really bad. And why Canada's West Coast has giant fucking trees and animals, because they never once get crushed by the Ice Age. It doesn't occur there. It gets warmer there for them. So that's another reason why they're probably bigger. It's because they get even hotter temperatures soon. When the fucking ice age comes, it'll be like tropical. Yeah, so I'm tempted. Maybe I'll have to move out west one day. I know a lot of my friends from different research projects have been asking me to come stay with them out west, but I don't know. It's just all my family connections are here right now, and family's everything for me, so I'm not just going to bail on them. Maybe one day my whole family move out there. I kind of doubt it, but we'll see. Fucking ice keeps getting worse here. I don't know if anyone's heard, but Canada's East Coast broke all recorded records for the coldest temperature ever in history that we have on record. So as much as you hear CNN going on and on, we should be paying more money for carbon taxes because some parts of the fucking world are melting. Well, I got news for you. Other parts are getting fucking colder. Sons of lying bitches. <laughs> I guess not really lying. It's just more misdirection, right? I do that a lot too like someone like tries to like ask like if a woman asks you if they look fat and something I'll try to misdirect and talk about something else <laughs> it's like aren't chicken wings delicious <laughs> so it's like technically you're not lying you're just trying to change the subject misdirection it's like that whole we channels we charity scandal in Canada right now. The government's like in panic mode because they're starting to realize that everyone in the right mind is fighting the lockdown to get our human rights back, get businesses back open, stop the fucking entire economy from tanking. I was just looking how much they gave out for CERB and we're close to getting to the trillion dollar mark. I was like, oh my fucking God, Canada went a trillion dollars in debt this year. Can you fucking imagine that? See, like I didn't even think that was humanly possible. So yeah, no wonder they're trying to phase out the CERB. It's like, dear God, it's like the whole country going on welfare is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> oh, well, I shouldn't fucking be too down in the dumps over it. When I try to look at it, is that's where the mass migration is going to help. We got all these people coming from all over the world to be in Canada. Well, fuck, they're going to have a lot of work cut out for them. We fucking dug a hole like you wouldn't believe and fucking filled it with diarrhea. And we're going to need help to clean it out. <laughs> All right, there's too bad. <laughs> it's like the whole fucking Canada is a paradise and dream and just sit back and relax. It's going to be over. And we're going to have a whole shitload of work to do. So, yeah, more hands the better. If anyone wants to come to Canada and help, <laughs> it's, now's the best time. <laughs> The bliss phase of the 80s is long gone. <laughs> now, that's why I noticed some people on my Facebook pages were posting 
graphs showing what it was like for different generations, how much wealth and then how much poverty and debt they had. And it went like my grandparents' generation was uber poverty where they fucking had to like fucking build their own houses from scratch out in the fucking wilderness. Well, they had people trying to stab them in the back the whole time. Saying, get out of here, you migrants. <laughs> and then fucking... They had to do everything. Harvest your own water, collect your own water, harvest your own food. If you didn't grow your own food, you fucking starved. So yeah, that's what... That's what I was like, holy shit, man. Our generation, like my grandparents, they were fucking tough as nails, right? Like, they ain't no sissies growing up in that generation, right? <laughs> My grandpa was telling me it's like back before they had clean drinking water resources, there's kids dying in his class of polio every fucking year. So I was like, man, like every year your school year started, someone was dying that year. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, they didn't have no fucking sissies, that's for sure. And then you look at the other wealth thing, how it had changed. And how my parents' generation just had everything handed to them on silver platters. Fucking union jobs are paying a hundred times the fucking real value of their work. So the fucking taxpayers were just funding this giant fucking runaway train of greed and fucking corruption. <laughs> and everyone became fucking sissies. It's like my parents' generation, dear God, they're the fucking laziest sissies I've ever seen in my life. So it's like, yeah, it's like when I start to see our generation going back into that fucking poverty and having to work to get shit. I'm like, holy fuck, man, maybe we won't be the sissy generation for much longer. All oh, this will be a good kick in the butt and teach us to stop being fucking lazy and expecting everything handed to us. No pain, no gain. I know some people are probably bitching about them, like, oh, I wish I could be like my parents' generation, just get the union to pay me a hundred times what my work is worth. <laughs> oh, I got a mankini print. Woohoo! Can't really say wahoo for that anymore, because really it fucking sucks balls. Not in a good way. But it's better than no prints. Hey, jungle shorts. Even worse. <laughs> oh well. Stop complaining, man. Jeez. No, I should think about the dream, man. Fuck, did the dream ever get good? So at one part in the dream, here, let's look at the stats. Excuse me. So would they give us two prints, one including the mankini? And it's the unlimited mankini, if anyone's wondering. Probably not if you watch my show, because I did a whole episode bitching about it. <laughs> oh my god, the mankini's down to three ped. <laughs> nice work, guys. <laughs> We took a print that was worth 50 ped each, and in 50 sales, we got it all the way down to worthless. Well done. Oh well. Who gives a shit? I sure as hell don't. <laughs> Man, see, even Jungle Shorts is probably worth more. No, see, Jungle Shorts and the Mankini are almost worth the same now. Well done, guys. Not to blame you guys and all, I make the same fucking mistake. Getting greedy, wanting to sell something fast, putting it for sale in the auction, and just fucking tanking the value of it because I didn't put a uh, reserve bid. Like, really, if each person who sold the Mankini print put a 100 ped reserve, we'd be selling them for a 100 ped, and we'd be profiting from this. But because we got greedy and put no reserve bid and just sold it for nothing, now all of a sudden this crafting mission is worthless. Well, maybe that'll be a lesson for the... What is it? The Sandrunner fuel cells. Come on, guys. Don't keep selling the prints for jack shit. <laughs> You're only killing it for everyone. And killing it not in a good way. <laughs> now, here I got on my desk. I was wondering though it was moving. I collected some milkweed seeds. So if anyone's in another country, I don't know if other countries actually have milkweed growing, but you just don't have monarchs. But anyways, this is what monarch butterflies need to live. It's kind of funny, their entire species is dependent on this one little seed. If this seed stopped growing for some reason and there was no more, then it'd be the end of the monarchs, because apparently that's the, their only food reserve. So that's another thing with the gravity wells, right? You can take gravity, gravity wells, create fucking seeds like these, like plants. 
but altering the field to manipulating it to create them and then it's like a chain reaction eventually you'll end up with monarchs science is still at odds to figure out all of those details but I'm, I think they're getting closer and closer every day alright let's check out these boots see what that print is worth 2000 markup yeah, so someone's letting those go for nothing, too. Well done. Oh, well. I don't want to get too down in the dumps. There's going to be players like me that make mistakes, and I can't be bitching about it. No, soon. I'm not, like, after i seen that dream, I'm optimistic that maybe I will be going back up north again in my lifetime. I was starting to worry that I'd be looking after my uncle for the rest of my life, but... No, it seems like, according to my dreams, I will be going on another trip. It was funny, the guys that came with me on the trip, obviously a lot of the guys that I hang out with aren't into ancient mystery stuff, so and they're not into haunted houses, so they don't really care about going on trips up north for that. What they want to go up north for is the fucking partying and the fucking gold mining. So that was another part of the dream. Now in the dream, we've seen some mountains in the horizon. We're like, hey, we're going to go check those out for gold. And everyone in the car is like, yeah, let's go gold panning. So in the dream, we tried to get to the mountain. And I can't remember why, but for some reason, oh yeah, we were going to park. Because there was nowhere close to the mountain that we could park. And the guy that brought his car, Frank, he was worried that it was going to get robbed. Because, I don't know if you guys know this, when you go up north, the First Nations people rob everyone for booze. And it's like, I know a lot of times people don't like to talk about it because it's kind of a mean thing to say, but it's fucking true. You go up north, they fucking rob people like crazy. Can't leave your car anywhere, can't leave your house unlocked, you'll fucking get robbed. And I guess it's not all First Nations people, there is a lot of addicts up there that work in the mines too. So when you get people either hooked on booze or meth or crystal, it's fucking a nightmare up north. That's why even though it's cheaper living conditions, people will say, hey, maybe you don't want to go move up north because you're going to get fucking robbed all the time. And it's weird, too, because you think in the old days, in the 80s, Canada almost had no theft. Like, police had nothing to do. You could leave your bike on the side of the road for fucking years and no one would take it. It's because it was in the 80s, it was the big boom where everyone had so much money. It was like, what the fuck? Like, you could just get a government job and they'll fucking, the union will pay you a hundred times more than you would normally doing the same job. So I was like, why the hell would anyone need to steal anything? Government was just fucking handing money out like crazy. And the unions are just fucking soaking it up. And so many people got union jobs that they didn't care to complain about it. I remember asking my dad, I'm like, dad, what's going to happen when the union wastes all the money? He's like, oh, don't worry, that'll just be some future generation's problem. <laughs> oh, he's got a good chuckle out of that one now. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, not to be too down the dumps. So, yeah, in the dream, we had to walk a far ways from where we could park that was safe to fucking walk all the way to the mountain. And as we were going... Fucking, uh, I forget, we were going really late at night, and we had a whole bunch of, like, we were partying and drinking, and then the cops started coming, like, we seen, like, an OPP coming up the road, so we fucking hid in the ditch. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty interesting. Oh, yeah, and then something about, we got, like, all soaked, and we are like, trying to find a place to dry, because it was, like, the winter, and we're, like, holy shit, we gotta find somewhere. And then there was this really nice, like, uh, old people that we ran into when we were walking back to the car. They're like, holy shit, even though there's a pandemic going and we probably should be isolating from the city folk. It's like, hey guys, come in to our place and warm up because you're going to get fucking frostbite out there. Yeah, so then we, we ended up stopping and hanging out with this old couple that were up north. So that was pretty wild. And I was thinking, geez, like, even in my dream, I'm dreaming about the fucking pandemic now. Or the lockdown, I should say. Alright, so... And it was funny in the dream. <laughs> At one point when we were walking, 
Yeah, I guess it was right when we began walking to the mountain. My buddies are like, oh, let's take this one trail. It's just covered in ice. So fucking we take this trail. I'm walking on the ice. I'm like, dear God, I wish I would have brought shoes because I was doing that new age thing of grounding, walking around with no shoes. I do that occasionally up north because for some reason the energy up there is really strong and I actually do get effects from it. Like weird visions and stuff, but anyways, yeah. So <laughs> I'm like, hey guys, I got to go back to the car and get my shoes. Walking around in no shoes is not working on this ice. <laughs> Whoops, I picked sin. There we go. I remember that from the dream pretty vividly because I'm like, oh, my feet are so cold. And the funny part is my buddies are like, man, they wanted to get to the gold mine so quick that they're like, all right, well, you just run back to the car, get your shoes and run back to meet us. And we're just going to keep walking at the normal pace. I'm like, you bastards, you won't even wait. Right? <laughs> so what happens is I run back to the car. And it turns out that trail they were taking backed around all the way in a loop and came out right to the car. <laughs> so by the time I walked all the way back, got my shoes and put them on, the guys were like, hey, what the hell? We're back at the car? <laughs> yeah, so then after that, it's like we were like, man, we can't get to the fucking mountain. And I was thinking, dear God, guys, we should because there's I know a spot where we can get some good gold. They're like, yeah, we should go for the gold. And then in the back of my mind, I was thinking, I don't really know where the gold is. I just know an ancient mystery spot. I'm not telling them there's gold there. <laughs> I'm the worst for that. I kept doing that on these trips. I'm like telling my friends, like, yeah, let's go gold panning. Meanwhile, I'm like convincing them to go gold panning right where I know some ancient mystery stuff is. <laughs> like, yeah, you guys gold pan. I'm going to, I'll be right back. <laughs> No, it is trippy being up north in that ancient mystery area because there is gold everywhere. Like half the rocks you pick up will have iron pyrite in it, like fool's gold. And people mock fool's gold, but in reality, fool's gold actually has real gold in it, but just trace amounts. So it's practi practically worthless because in order to separate it from the fool's gold, it's not worth your time. It takes more money and resources to separate than the gold is actually worth in tiny little specks, right? But the catch to that too is when you find iron pyrite, that's a sign that there's real gold in good quantities all around it. It's like that's one of the things you look for. If you can find iron pyrite, fool's gold, you know you're in the right area for, for mining actual gold. So yeah, I was like telling them in the dream, look guys, there's iron pyrite all over. And they're like, yeah, there is. <laughs> no, around here, you won't find any fool's gold. Like where I live in southern Ontario, you won't find any anywhere. You can look everywhere, like through gravel yards, fucking trails, mountains. There's no iron pyrite anywhere around here. As soon as you go up north, it's fucking everywhere. That's because it's got the second best gold in the whole fucking world. So obviously you're going to find iron pyrite near it. Alright, let's do a quick message from the sponsor. Today's Wicked Dream episode, or boring, if you hate dreams, was brought to you by Crack! Crack! It'll fuck you up! Woo! <laughs> Alright, we're back. Ah, uh, I know the problem here. I was like, why haven't we got a global? It's like, oh yeah, I turned globals off. Let's <laughs> turn them back on, yo. No, if anyone's wondering, I'm just joking about that. That thing really doesn't turn globals off and on, but sometimes I wonder if it does, because every time I've had a global, I had it on. And the casino does that. I don't know if you guys noticed. If you go to a slot machine, you turn the volume up on max, you get bigger payouts. If you turn the volume all the way to zero, you almost get nothing. And I think they have the machines programmed like that, because the louder it is, they want people to hear like around, like, hey, someone's winning, you should bet. But if you turn the volume all the way down, they're like, oh, we don't need to give this guy any wins because it'll just say loss, 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 but no one will be hearing it because he has the volume all the way down. That could just be like a wild guess too. Probably is. But... So anyways, after like multiple failed attempts getting to the mountain, we were just ready about to give up. Then all of a sudden we seen some babes going into a house. 
So we're like, what the hell is in that house, right? So we go over and take a look, and it's this fucking giant mansion house that's been, like, converted into a fucking bar. And there's, like, a whole bunch of bikini babes, like, partying around this giant outdoor pool. I guess it's heated because it was, like, winter. And we're like, all oh, right, it was fucking wild. And then all my friends are like, man, it's so weird. It's like there's a whole bunch of people that can speak English, and there's other white people here. I'm like, yeah, that's why everyone likes going to party up north. If you get sick of the multiculturalism thing, you can actually go hang out with other people that speak English. <laughs> so I don't know. I know some people look down upon that, like you shouldn't want to go hang out with your own people, but I don't know, it's kind of nice for a change occasionally. I don't know, I'm like one of those people who likes a mix of everything, the two sides of coins. I love multicultural parties, but I also like parties where I can understand people speaking. It's kind of nice. <laughs> now, it's a nice variety, too. Sometimes you like to see women from all over the world, and it's nice not to have to get on planes and actually go travel all over the world to see them. Now, I often notice that with uh, migration, if anyone else has noticed, that more women are in favor of mass migrations into countries than men are. And then I started to realize why that is. And I was like, it's the whole, like, provider starting a family thing, right? Like, a lot of times when guys come from other countries to m immigrate somewhere, they usually hook up with the local women, right? So that's why women are in favor of mass migrations, because they have a chance to have more opportunity to meet new mates and stuff but when you see the opposite when women migrate from other countries they often never associate with the men of that country but what they do is they get their family and import them from the country they came from so that's why like guys are kind of realizing this and they're like hey like when mass migrations occur i have less and less opportunities to find a mate to actually have a family so, but then I started there. That isn't all bad because what happens is I noticed from other traveler videos on YouTube, it's when guys from like other countries or from your country go and travel abroad. That's when they start meeting women that want to marry them, right? Because then they see like they're trying to get to Canada and then they have that opportunity to hook up with you and actually get to where you're from. And... Yeah, I guess for women it works for traveling too, because like when women travel abroad, that's a big thing too. Usually most women that travel a lot are always trying to find their dream mate in another country or something because they've come to the conclusion that none of the men where they live are really that interested in them. <laughs> so either they can hope for mass migrations into their country or to go and move to another or travel a lot and try to get hooked up that way. Which I'm not against any of that. It's like, yeah, it's just human nature and biology and how it works. You can't really fight it. Now that's what I noticed too. For a while there, I was kind of like so against mass migrations, but I shouldn't say that. Like there is occasionally, you see it a little bit more now where women will come from other countries and actually hook up with the local Canadian guys. So it's not completely unhappening now. Where for a long time it was. I'd say out of like multiracial couples you see in my city, it's always like multiracial with like a, a guy from another country and a girl from Canada, like maybe 98% of the time. And now about 2% of the time you'll see an actual woman from another country hooking up with a guy from Canada. Which is kind of nice. Now that I see that, I feel less left out and then it doesn't make me hate migration. See, I think that's why a lot of people don't realize that when someone hates migration, it's usually because they're experiencing something bad from it. It's not usually that someone just wakes up and for no reason is like, oh, I hate this. It's like usually there's something that leads you up to that point where you actually hate something, right? If something's good happening from it, like why would you be hating on it? <laughs> yeah, so maybe if you're having difficulty hating the mass migrations into your countries, just try to see both sides of it. There's some good and bad. <laughs> you don't have to dwell on just the bad shit. Right, I'm getting absolute fucking horseshit for blueprints. I think it's because the game's telling me people don't want to hear shit about mass migrations. Right, fuck this terminal. Not in a good way. Alright, let's go collect my reward from May. 
see what she's saying. Alright, let's see. What am I getting here? Yeah, so they are. They're, they're giving me skills. I reached level 1 in the mirror material design and level 2 or 12 tailor. So if anyone's wondering what the rewards are from this, they're pretty decent. Get some skills. It reminds me of the, what is it, the Monria daily mission. Very similar. That's why I find it really strange when people like hate on racists. Like, oh, this person's racist, they're a fucking jackass and they don't know any better. But I'm like, what happens when a First Nations person is racist? They literally just got their fucking country taken by mass migration and genocide. What are they supposed to do, like the people? <laughs> I guess technically they are supposed to like them, but... It's like every time I meet a racist First Nations person, I have nothing against that. I'm like, sure, it's like you've gone through a lot of fucking heartache. It's like, man, I have no reason to say that you shouldn't be racist. <laughs> I guess it's all depending how you act on the racism. If you're like going around giving people a hard time about it, well, maybe that is kind of mean. If you just feel racist and do nothing about it, that's probably better. <laughs> Now I really hope that Canada finds a way to to ease the tensions with all the different races or even cultures. Fucking English and French people are still fighting like crazy here. I try not to fight with French people because we do have a lot in common. Like I like hockey so that's a lot. Usually when I fight with French people I can relate to them and start talking about hockey and then all of a sudden we're like oh at least we have some common ground. We can work from there. Yeah, it wasn't that one story of racism on the news when there, some doctor assumed that the First Nations person was an alcoholic and they considered that racist? Well, it's like, what happens when like 90% of the population is raging alcoholics and you work at a hospital and like every time someone comes in from that town, you're like, you can almost guarantee they're a raging alcoholic because 90% of the population from that place is. So is that really racism or they're just assuming that, hey, you're from that place up north, you're going to have a lot of fucking alcoholics? Like, even the white people that live up north, they have a really high ratio of fucking drug addicts. Like, not weed addicts, I mean, like, fucking crystal meth or fucking heroin or crack or whatever. Meth. There's a lot of fucking hard drugs up north. So that's the one thing people recommend not doing, is if you're a recovering addict, you probably don't want to move up north. Because when you get there, you're going to be surrounded by fucking drugs and addicts. And some wild parties, though. <laughs> Wild pool parties with bikini babes. <laughs> no, so sadly that's how the dream ended. I was like goggling at the fucking girls in the fucking pool. And then I woke up. I was like, I could go back to sleep and keep this dream going. But I think the best parts were already over. I don't want to be so shallow in my dreams that all I'm doing is trying to dream of babes all the time. But it is tempting, like, man, geez, go back and live up north. Well, I don't know, I was thinking if I ever do get my life turned around that I could demolish the haunted house, rebuild it, and then fucking have a place of my own to live. But that's a pretty big stretch. I really don't think that'll happen in my lifetime, but maybe. Who knows, maybe if my vlogging goes better. I couldn't believe it. Yesterday, remember I was talking about how I had all my camera gear together and I didn't need the extra camera because I wasn't going to be walking or running or biking for this next one. I was probably just going to be walking, not biking or rollerblading because I have no bike or rollerblades yet and I have to film soon. But I was like, oh, at least I still have the drone so I could do a, at least a couple different camera angles, do a drone shot of the fucking school. So not only can we remember the school, but we get a nice good picture of it. Fucking brand new drone. Go to charge the battery. Guess what? Fucking battery shot. Guess what else? I ordered three extra batteries from China. They never came. 
So, and it was past the, uh, the return period or getting a refund. I waited too long. So I lost about, I don't know, near $200 on drone batteries. And the one battery that came with it is broken. So, probably spent enough to buy a DJI fucking sweet drone. But instead I went with the cheap one. And the cheap one ended up costing me more in the long run. And I can't even use it. I just kind of want to take the drone and smash it into a million pieces. But I'm like, fuck it. I'll try to fix this battery and I guess order fucking new ones. Now I'm fucking screwed for filming again. I don't know, some days I'm like, oh, it seems like the universe is pointing me in the direction to get these vlogs done. And at the other time I'm thinking, Jesus, every time I fucking do it, some disaster happens where I'm fucking soaking thousands of dollars into it and I'm not getting anything done. Oh well, that's the, the struggle of being a YouTuber, right? A lot of times you just keep soaking money into the projects and get sh jack shit out of it. Come on. Sorry. Killed the spider, but man, I can't stand spiders. Uh, now I feel bad for killing something for no reason. I don't know. I don't mind if spiders stay away from where I'm trying to use my computer. But when they start crawling all over my computer desk, I'm like, fuck it. It's got to die. It's either me or him, right? Like some of the spiders we have here are fucking recluse spiders. They fucking bite you. You fucking get like gangrene in your limbs. So you don't want to fuck around and have a whole bunch of spiders crawling around you. But if spiders stay away from my computer desk and they just hang around my plants or something, I'm like, all right, hang around the plants, eat the insects. All right, we got a cohabitable situation here. Yeah, so if anyone's planning to travel from other countries and you want to see different parts of Canada, if you want to hang around the multicultural parts of Canada and not really see too many original Canadians, then just go to places like big cities and stuff. It's like Toronto, fucking packed with multicultural people. You'll love it if you love the multicultural stuff there. I love fucking Toronto's multicultural scene because they actually split it up into self-segregation where each part of the city is different cultures. So you can go to Greek Town or Little Portugal or fucking all the different areas. And then other parts are like where everyone mixes. So it's like Toronto's a good balance of that. You can be around with your own people if you hung out in that one little district. Or you can go to the multicultural area and enjoy as many cultures as you want. It's a nice variety. Or if you want to see like a whole town that's just like original Canadians, like all Europeans that came and learned English and worked together had like a cohesive culture of almost no crime then you can go up north except the crime part fucking the poverty is like reached the point where you still get robbed like crazy up north man when i brought my canoe up north it got robbed with like in the first week someone broke into my garage and fucking stole the canoe well, i shouldn't say broke in i didn't fucking lock the garage because i was thinking who's going to come into an abandoned garage and look through it See if there's anything to steal. What do you know? Now, I think I spent about $500 in that canoe, buying the canoe, paying someone to drive it up there, paying people to store it at other locations. I never got to use it once. The fucking trip that I went to use it, fucking got there and the fucking canoe was stolen out of the garage. Yeah, that's Canadian problems, right? Someone stole my canoe. <laughs> no, it's a very unique canoe. Like an antique. Well, not an antique. Well, I guess in these days. It was from like the 80s or whatever. So it's pretty close to an antique. And it's a really hard plastic one. And it's from my region. And it's like all tagged. So if like I see that canoe again, I'll know right away that it's mine. So I'm kind of hoping I just never run into it again. Because if I find the people who stole it, God, I get mad when someone steals something. Now, one time I went to the bar with my friend, and he borrowed his dad's bike, and we went downtown Kitchener to party at the pool house. It was actually a fundraiser to help the Syrians come to Canada. I thought we were helping Christian Syrians migrate to Canada. So I was like, yeah, let's, let's go there, raise a whole bunch of money and stuff. Later I found out that we were helping Muslim groups come here, but I was like, well, it doesn't really matter. I don't have anything against Muslims, but 
it's kind of weird. I was like, why are we helping the Muslims come to Canada when it's like the Christians are trying to escape being killed by the Muslims? They're the ones that actually need to escape, right? You don't have Christians going around slaughtering people in other countries still. That happened in the olden days. So I found that a little strange. But anyways, yeah, I helped raise the money to, to get the Syrians to come to Canada. I think we raised over 10 grand that night. Not just for me, like everyone pooling together. It was a good show. Alicia Brilla th threw it. She uh, has an Indian background. Her dad makes amazing samosas. But anyways, yeah. So as we were coming out, turned out there was a Jewish kid who was fucking robbing our bikes as we came out to the bike rack. And when we got there, we were like fucking hammered. And my buddy Matthew, I think, I don't know, I've never really seen him get mad. But I think he might have a bad temper. Because <laughs> when he's seeing the guy like stealing our bikes, you could see his eyes just like light up. He's like, are you trying to steal our bikes? And then I was like trying to defuse the situation. I'm like, it's okay, Matthew. He didn't actually steal the bikes. <laughs> it's like... He was maybe, yeah, and then, what did he say? He's like, oh yeah, I was just looking at them. They're so nice, I had to pet them or whatever. <laughs> I was like, thank God we came out like moments in time just in just as he was stealing the bikes. Yeah, and then the, the kid ran away. And I was like, well, running away, I guess that was kind of evidence he was trying to steal the... Oh, yeah, and then we went to turn our bike lights on. He had already stole the lights off the bikes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess technically I don't know if he was Jewish. He just had the Jewish appearance. It's like the, the fro or whatever. <laughs> Dark hair. I don't want to say any other features, so I'll get my channel taken down. <laughs> Probably said too much already. <laughs> no, my whole life, I had never really met a Jewish person before because I went to a Catholic school. And as you realize, Catholics and Jews fight all the time, so they don't really co-mingle in schools. But when then I switched to public school, I got to start meeting some Jewish girls. Man, some of the biggest boobs I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like, I definitely have no issues with Jewish people. I freaking love the ladies. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Maybe it was like uh, natural selection. All the Jewish guys tend to marry girls with really big racks. And next thing you know, all the Jewish ladies have like, perfect boobs <laughs> and they're so nice too so not just just say I like them only for their boobs <laughs> and the super intelligence thing have you ever noticed like I don't know I used to go and see doctors around in my area they're average doctors and occasionally I get a doctor from like Iraq or India I'm like whoa these doctors are a little better seem more knowledgeable then I went to like the Jewish part of Toronto, like the Jewish area, how they split up. Started going to Jewish hospitals. I was like, holy fuck. Man, these doctors are like fucking like light years ahead of the other ones. <laughs> really nice, like like bedside manner and everything. And super smart. And the best testing equipment. I was like, holy fuck. It's like never again am I going to go to white people's hospitals or fucking anywhere else. Or the German hospitals. It's like, fuck that. I'm going to the fucking Jewish district. <laughs> yeah, if anyone hasn't been to a Jewish hospital before, I highly recommend them. Not to say all Jewish people are the same or anything. I'm, I'm the worst for that. Always categorizing people. Try not to. I'm trying to be a better person. It's just not working. <laughs> Alright, so I'm getting absolute bullshit for prints today, eh? How many clicks have I done here? Absolute jack shit. Arminent device, that was it? Holy. So you can see this is why I call it the thousand click crafting trick. Because really, if you don't do a thousand clicks, you could have like a bad run of like 500 clicks or something. Or a thousand ped, I mean. And you would just call the whole trick shit. But really, once you do like a thousand ped worth and tons of clicks, 
that's when you start to realize, hey, there could be something to this trick. Now that was the weirdest thing when I traveled up north. Like you know how you hear the First Nations people are so good at protecting the environment and stuff? That was the one real eye shocker to me. It's like you go to the European parts up north where it's ma mainly all white people, fucking spotless. You never find a shred of paper on the ground anywhere, it's like pristine. Then you go to the First Nations Reserve and they said there's just fucking trash everywhere. They like live in giant piles of filth. I was like, oh my god, it's like I always heard the opposite when I was down in the city. That the First Nation people were really clean living and protecting the environment and all that. I didn't expect it to be the complete opposite when you actually went there. But then I was thinking it's probably the raging alcoholic thing, right? Like how much are you going to clean when you're a raging alcoholic? And I don't blame him for turning to booze. Like fuck man. Mass migrations almost forced me to drink quite a few times. So it gets depressing when you're like, hey, losing all your land and culture, can't understand anything. All the women don't want to date you because you're not the same race as them. So yeah, I definitely, I would probably be in the same boat. Trashing the place and drinking all day just to keep my sanity and not go crazy and fucking go for revenge or something. <laughs> not to mention European people are kind of lucky in a way that we've had raging alcoholics in our bloodlines for thousands of years, like going back to the Sumerian times. I don't know if people realize, but a lot of the ancient Sumerians were ancient Europeans before they got genocided out of the Middle East. It's like all of what Iran used to be before it got taken over. I don't know, people are surprised when they hear that different people have lived in Iran. Like, do you do realize everyone has occupied Iran at some point? It's like even the fucking Chinese took it over at one point, or the Mongolians. So it's like, really, it's like, you go to Iran, you're going to find just about any people have owned it at one point. I bet you even the Nubians, fucking African people, they probably owned Iran at one point. Probably still some black people there. Yeah, that's how I was talking. My one buddy that was from Iran... He has like royalty background and stuff or I forget what type of background. Yeah, I think he was saying royalty or something. But yeah, he was saying that what he liked about Iran was the whole multicultural thing too. He's like, you can go to Iran and find any culture in the world. And he said the weirdest thing that people don't talk about in Iran is that they have the First Nations people from like North America and colonies there. It's like, how does that make any sense, right? They've been there for thousands of years. And he was thinking the only thing that could explain it is maybe the early explorers captured some and brought them over and then they ended up living in Iran. But it's like, I, I highly doubt that theory accounts for all of them. But you don't really hear about that. Eh? Like when you hear about Iran on the news, you often like think of like maybe Arab people, right? You're like, oh, Iran is just all Arabs. But no, that's actually not even close to the truth. Now, I don't know how diverse it is. Maybe there are small pockets of each people. I don't know. Maybe it is majority Arab now. I would definitely not be surprised if that occurred. <laughs> now, it's like the whole Ottoman Empire thing, right? Like the, the Muslim thing tend to expand in a lot of places. And it has a way of taking over completely, right? No, there's anything wrong with that. To each their own, I guess. The only thing that it kind of bugs me with the, it's not even exclusive to Muslims, it's the whole Abrahamic religion thing, is destroying all the Sumerian relics because they don't want people to learn the truth of the past. It's like when you start going around smashing my people's history, that kind of pisses me off a little bit, but hey, I know a lot of other people have to deal with that, so it's not like we're exclusively the victims in that. <laughs> Alright, so maybe I should finish the show with a little bit more Entropia content. I got about 10 seconds. <laughs> now, hoping tomorrow's episode will finish this crafting run. This is going so horrible, I'm just calling it here.
I've got absolute bullshit for crafting today. It's probably because I was telling some really fucking horrible stories. Sorry guys to rant about migration so much, but I don't know, it's really the only thing that I encounter in my day-to-day -day life these days, so it's hard not to talk about what you actually experience. And I'd like to talk about hanging out with babes at parties and bikinis, but really other than my dreams, <laughs> that's not really occurring. <laughs> Let's say hi to Claire. Now let's get some more information, Claire. I was wondering that. Can we pick up the... Whoops. <laughs> Forgot the E on her name. Sorry, Claire. I can't even spell my own name half the time, so it's nothing against you. I'm a little bit slow in some instances. Who am I kidding? Most. <laughs> and I was wondering that, like, they said that you can pick up your Riverside things and people are asking about it. So I was wondering, maybe can we pick it up from Claire? It's her job to, like, stand here and help people with people on Next Island. Or no, she's not an official, so maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah, guys, so I'm going to try to go to sleep early tonight. Maybe I'll get some more dreams that are better stories. Or I could try doing stuff in real life, but goddamn lockdown still going. Oh yeah, did you guys hear the news about the Czech Republic? They were praised at the country that started using masks the most first, and they almost had the virus eliminated before they started using the masks, and they were going to try to use it as a selling point, saying, look, the masks worked in check. But the plan backfired. Today they admitted that the masks made the fucking virus explode worse in the check than anywhere else in the fucking Europe. So now they have, like, the record high. And they're like, the most masks actually equate to the record high fucking virus cases. What a fucking concept, right? Like, it's like when you throw water on a grease fire, and then you're it, it's surprised that it didn't put out the flames. It's like, that's basically what's happening, guys. I don't know, like, these lockdowns and masks, Sweden already proved it's a fucking nightmare. They had the virus eliminated there, just using natural herd immunity. But, just to clarify for YouTube, my, agree, my views do not fucking agree with, well, they do agree with even the fucking CDC and the... World Health Organization has said it now. So who exactly am I not agreeing with? I guess my views do not agree with the Communist Chinese Party that's fucking controlling the goddamn YouTube censorship. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry to finish on such a negative note. On the positive note, Claire did not respond. <laughs> now, and everyone who loves the masks and lockdowns and wants to be in fucking welfare for the rest of their life, all the power to you. I guess that could be the, the best solution, too. No one really knows. Do we? <laughs> hey, Patreon, if anyone wants to help with that, it'd be cool. Society6 would be sweet. Shragbucks would be awesome. Game kits. We can get paid to be a gamer. Hydro will pay you to watch videos. They pay extra if you watch it on Fire Sticks. Bitcoin is the Bitcoin Casino, which I forgot to do spins for, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Alright, let's go do that quick before I fucking forget every time. Right, so far we're at 36,631 Satoshi. Let's roll. 36,655 Satoshi. Oh yeah, and I got some weird news about the Bitcoin Casino, guys. I'll show you. You know how you can bet on stuff and you can bet on the presidential election? You'll never guess who's the fucking favorite to win according to their odds. Anyone want to guess? Like, I've never even met a Biden supporter, never heard of one on the internet, Never have I seen anyone on social media say, hey, Biden's who I'm going to vote for. And look who's, who's the favorite. They've got Biden ahead by 60%. Or no, that's the, the outcome odds. The person who's favored to lose the most is Bernie Sanders. So you get 21 to 1 odds, I guess that is. Sorry, guys, if I'm explaining the odds wrong. I don't really know how it works yet. Even at regular casinos, I find it confusing. So Trump is actually paying 2.38 to 1. 
So for I think for every Satoshi you bet, you get two back. For every Satoshi you bet for here, you get 22 back. And if you bet for Biden, he's the favorite to win, so you only get 1.5 back. I could be reading this wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what this means, right? Holy, look at some of these, 240 to odds. Haven't really heard of these other candidates, so I guess they're a long shot. So I was going to bet on the person between Trump and Biden, whoever had the biggest payout amount. And I thought it was going to be Joe Biden because I thought he was like favored to lose and he was the underdog that would pay out more. But no, apparently Trump's the underdog. I find that hard to believe, but is anyone else going to bet on the presidential election through Bitcoin? Who do you guys think? Should I bet on Trump or Biden? It's like personally, I'm kind of sick of almost everything that Trump is doing, so I'm actually cheering for Biden to win. And the only plus side I see to Trump right now is the whole moon mission. If he keeps the Artemis program going, that'd be about the only thing I'd be happy about him winning. Everything else, he's fucking, he fucking backstabbed all of his supporters. And I can't believe how many of his supporters don't even see it. A, he didn't stop illegal migration. B, he didn't put fucking Hillary Clinton in prison. And C, he didn't fix the economy. It's the world record fucking unemployment for the U.S. His fucking lockdown, allowing it to happen in the U.S., completely destroyed the fucking economy. Sure, the stock market may have recovered, but if everyone's out of fucking jobs, man, Trump is the fucking worst leader I've ever seen. So yeah, but his moon mission, I like that. So I'm not going to completely hate on Trump. He just really let me down. Sort of like Rob Ford. They always promise all this fucking shit to help like conservative values and they just go right back to the liberal values. Fucking sons of bitches. <laughs> Not that I hate all liberals. A lot of smoking babes are liberal. So I gotta try to be nice to them. <laughs> try. Keyword. Alright, the virtual sex... Sex <laughs> The virtual made sex machine is for adults and men only. But if ladies need a sex machine that's really mean, <laughs> then they knew who to call. <laughs> Yeah, especially if you're visiting Toronto. Just kidding, am I? <laughs> right, if you happen to get a worthless Mankini blueprint in your vaporizer and it tastes like shit because it should be worth a lot more, then give the show a dislike. But if you want to help with a like, I appreciate that too. And yeah, just make sure you never buy the products from my sponsor because it will ruin your life. Bye for now, everyone. See what happened to my ears just from wearing masks for a couple days? It's like one is like normal. Or no, this one's the normal. Oh, God sakes, this one's the normal one. And the other one got bent out from the fucking masks. I can't believe I ever got tricked into fucking wearing the masks. All right, <laughs> take care everyone. See ya. Have, have fun. I'm going to try sleeping on the one side so I can squish my ear back in. <laughs> yeah, we're going to all look like fucking Dumbo by the end of this pandemic. <laughs> Or lockdown, I should say. It's not a real pandemic. Or it is a real pandemic. <laughs> Alright, see you guys. I gotta remember to use the sarcasm before I lose my channel. Alright, here's three things. See you later, guys. Have fun. Stay safe. Make, make sure to listen to authorities and wear those masks. Because, man, Canada will fine you fucking thousands of dollars and put you in jail if you don't listen to their fucking authoritarian regime. <laughs> Alright, see ya. Have fun.